There is an awful lot to celebrate here in Tucson right now with both the University of Arizona men's and women's basketball teams staying alive in their respective NCAA tournaments. The men have made it to the Sweet 16 after a close overtime win against TCU last night. And the t-shirts celebrating that achievement are now available to purchase on campus. You see right there. And the banner is up at McHale Center as well, showing the accomplishment. Next up for the Cats is the University of Houston, uh, the Cougars. And they will be playing in San Antonio. The Cougars are sure to put up a very tough fight, folks. If you recall, they were in last year's Final Four. So will the U of A Wildcats women's team follow suit and make it to the Sweet 16 on their road to Minneapolis? News for Tucson Sports Director Paul Cicala joins us live from McHale with more on what's standing in the way of the women's team punching their ticket to the Sweet 16. So, uh, Paul, are the Cats ready for this next challenge? <laughs> well, Sean, they have to be ready. They have no choice. As you know, it is one loss and you're out of there. You lose, bye-bye. Adios, sayonara, ciao for now. Of course, the Arizona players know that it's one and done, and the fans also do as well. The diehards realize how important uh, the home court advantage is. Of course, it was a near sellout in the victory against UNLV in the first round of the NCAA tournament, and the Wildcats actually trailed by five points in the fourth quarter. Had it not been for that home court advantage, the fans cheering in the opposing team's face and the whole nine yards, who knows, maybe Arizona wouldn't be here today still alive. So. The fans, they know they have to step it up, and the players, they realize on the court, they have to step it up as well. And we also begin with one particular guard who is filling the shoes of Ari McDonald and also stepping it up big. Arizona guard Shayna Pellington rose to the occasion in Arizona's win over UNLV on Saturday, scoring 30 points in the victory. She's our catalyst on offense and on defense, so she's, if Shayna goes, we go. And when she's really stagnant with the ball, we're stagnant. So I, I need this from Shayna, I expect it from Shayna. And expect this, Kate Reese is back with a vengeance. After being out for three games with the separated shoulder, she came on strong to score 16 points in the first round. Meanwhile. Reese and players like Ben Duyaney can't wait to play in front of a home crowd again. Hosting for the first time. Having that energy back on the floor is, uh, is amazing. An energy created by a home court advantage with old Pueblo fans packing McHale Center. Just having that experience really is beneficial for us. And then last year, I mean, it was completely different being in the bubble. So it was like we were playing an away game every time, which honestly I think is more beneficial for us now that we have it at home because we knew what it's like to play away. Now we home court advantage. And the Arizona women's basketball team hopes to join the men's basketball team and punch their ticket to the Sweet 16. Speaking of the men's team, well, they are back right here in the Old Pueblo after their victory last night. And I wouldn't doubt it if you see Coach Tommy Lloyd, the coach of the men's team, sitting in the seats cheering on the Arizona women's team as well as he also takes a break to prep for the Sweet 16 in San Antonio. And don't forget, coming up on News 4 Tucson at 6 p.m., we will continue our in-depth coverage of March Madness with the Arizona Wildcats. We'll check in with you once again here live at McHale Center and we'll hear from Coach Dia Barnes and find out what she's saying on what it takes to win. And not only that, talking about the sixth person off the bench and that is of course the crowd, the fans. I'm challenging you Tucsonans, come on out here. There's still plenty of tickets available. It is your chance to see the Arizona Wildcats in the NCAA tournament. Reporting live from here at McHale Center on the campus of the University of Arizona just before the NCAA Round 2 game. Paul C. Kala, News 4, Tucson. All right, thank you, Paul. We'll check back in just a bit. So, how are the fans feeling about the women's basketball team's chances to make it to the Sweet 16? News 4 Tucson's Eric Fink is live on campus where he met up with some diehard Wildcat fans who are hoping the Cats go all the way. Eric. No doubt about it, Sean. We are still more than two hours away from tip-off here at McHale Center for the final home game of the year for the U of A. The Wildcats taking on the Tar Heels of North Carolina. And there's one group of fans, a group of Tucsonans, very close friends, very big fans, who will be inside in about a half hour cheering loudly 
for their cats. They are a group of neighbors in Midtown who live near each other and sit next to each other at every game. It's become a decades long tradition for these ladies and one that takes on even more pride in March. They decorate the neighborhood before every March Madness game. It means fantastic emotions and feelings and it's terrific. <laughs> We enjoy each other, we enjoy celebrating, and celebrating the Wildcats as they win, and each individual player as they've grown and developed through the year or the years, because we've seen them from freshman year all the way to senior year and beyond. So it's just a great experience. And these ladies will be here to get inside of McHale Center in about a half hour. They will take their seats, catch a uh, shoot around before the game, and then take in another March Madness experience. A spot in the Sweet 16 in Greensboro on the line tonight. Tip time shortly after 7, the Wildcats and the North Carolina Tar Heels. You will hear from another member of this group of fans coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. We're live at McHale Center. I'm Eric Fink, News 4, Tucson. Thank you, Eric, and uh, folks may be able to cheer even louder tonight. There may not be as many people at tonight's game wearing masks, let alone on campus, and that's because starting today, fast ma face masks are no longer required on campus. University President Dr. Robert Robbins says the changes are based on improving transmission levels in the county, but university officials say they will adjust protocols again if there's an increase in cases.